Okay. We're going to start soon. Okay. Hello. I can hear myself echo. Let's fix that. Okay. Hi there. My name is Portia, and welcome to the IPFS weekly call. So, if you hear an echo, let me know. Hands up if you hear an echo. Okay. Can you guys move? Um, what about now? Do you see you hear the echo? Great. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes? Awesome. Okay, so once again, welcome to the IPFS weekly meeting. And um, today, we'll start off with announcements. And then we'll dive into our live presentation. Oh, still an echo. Um, I'm not sure where the echo is coming from. Okay, it's gone. Excellent. Yay. First problem solved. So once again, we will start with announcements. Then we will get into the presentation. And finally, we'll have five or 10 minutes for questions and answers. For questions and answers, could you please put, um, excuse me, questions and comments. If you could put your questions and comments in the chat and I will call you based on um, your name in the chat. That'd be great. I'll make things a little bit more organized. And um, let's begin with announcements. So who has announcements? Um, if you have an announcement, I think Michael does. Please raise your hand. Maybe it's safe for me to turn these on now. Oh, okay. Announcements? Okay, Mike, uh, Mike, please um, give your announcement. Hey, uh, sorry, um, can people see my screen right now? Yes. Okay, I apologize for the delay there. Zoom was give, giving me some trouble. Um, so just, uh, I wanted to do a really brief announcement, but it's, it's uh, extensive enough that it has a few slides. Um, my name is Mike Gelzer. I'm the working group captain for LibP2P, like the overall LibP2P project. Um, and we have put together, we're in the process of creating a roadmap, um, just like you guys are you're much further ahead of the state that we're at currently. Um, but we've put together our first sort of major draft where we want feedback from um, external stakeholders, uh, or I mean, just stakeholders generally, um, and in particular, IPFS uh, working group uh, captains or members who um, whose work depends on LibP2P. Um, I'll post that link in the, that document link in the, um, in the notes, uh, if I haven't already, but um, basically we, we just uh, put this document together. I'm not gonna try to go through the whole thing. I just wanna explain the, the state that it's in and then how you can help us. Um, right now, this document is just an aggregation of every idea um, that's been discussed by the LibP2P team for what we could do in the next like five years. Um, it's They range from tactical things like improving the docs to really far out there ideas like making a, a libp2p uh, hardware device um, 
and the people who install in their homes. So, I mean, it's, it's a, just a huge uh, compilation of these ideas. Um, it's not a roadmap in the sense that there are no dates. There's no, um, there, the items are not in any type of priority order that, that's intentional. Um, and we're not committed at this point to any of those things. They're just Raul and I, and Raul did most of the technical parts. I did most of the uh, products stuff at the end, but we all we did was take the existing ideas and aggregate them together. And our goal for this week is to get folks in the community um, and downstream users like IPFS to give us feedback on what things they care about. And we'll, we'll use that for prioritization. So um, that that's our main ask from you. Um, and in particular for uh, IPFS working group captains, like if you have a dependency on something in libp2p and it's not reflected anywhere in that roadmap, uh, you should tell us, like make a comment in the doc. Um, uh, I'll, I'll create a GitHub issue too, but probably best to put comments in the doc. Um, if you uh, think that, that uh, if you see something in the document that is particularly important to you, you should plus one it, like uh, that'll help us know um, about dependencies that we may not have already learned about. Okay, um, that I'll stop my screen share. Thanks for your time. Thanks. Um, any quick questions before we continue? Okay, um, thank you very much, Mike. And, oh, our, net, our presentation is called IPFS Live Streaming, and it is presented by Yoko, Elon, and Ben. Thank you very much for taking the time out to present to the IPFS weekly meeting, and we're looking forward to it. So let's get started. Okay, so um, as, I sta as you stated, uh, this is the IPFS live streaming, uh, which is a, um, something we launched at uh, the Toronto R Networks Conference in 2018. So um, R Networks is a fairly small conference. It just started up in Toronto. This is the second year. It's got only about 100 participants on it. Um, it's basically talking about um, community networks, uh, mesh networks, things of that nature, uh, focusing more on the people side, although there's quite a bit of tech in there as well. So um, the live streaming, the conference, uh, our budget was basically 100 bucks. Um, it wasn't something that was originally planned on happening, uh, but um, basically myself, Elon, um, we're kind of talking about how we can do video streaming over IPFS. Um, and some optimistic person said, hey, why don't we live stream the conference over IPFS? And um, we aimed at uh, making the content uh, distribution uh, easily scalable, uh, make it reproducible for next year and other similar size conferences, and uh, dog food for decentralized text, um, basically testing the limits, see what we can do, see what we can't do, things of that nature. So the project started. Um, the first commit was May 19th. The conference was July 13th. Uh, looking back at it, that was two months. Um, somehow we pulled it off. Although we had a proof of concept already in place, um, it was still quite the ask. But nonetheless, we did do it. Um, so before uh, we start, Okay, I'm going to talk about our stack, sorry. So our stack at the uh, our networks conference was basically a couple of HDMI capture cards and some audiovisual hardware. Um, we had used the OBS studio to manage the actual uh, streams and, and such on premise. Uh, we used OpenVPN for authentication and publishing. Uh, DigitalOcean was the host and managed DNSs and all that. Uh, Nginx and RTMP modules were used to proxy the traffic to the real-time servers. FFmpeg did all our encoding uh, into HLS. IPFS did the storage and distribution. Um, Video.js we used as the player for the website. Uh, and Terraform was uh, a means that we used to make it reproducible and easily deployable. So with that, I am going to show you a quick demo of how to actually deploy this. So uh, we're going to start by uh, cloning the Git re repository where all this is uh, stored. 
um, for anybody's use. And uh, then we're gonna do a bit of configuration. So we're gonna set a domain name where we're gonna put this, where we're gonna host this. Uh, we're gonna set an IP, uh, email address for uh, Let's Encrypt. Um, and we're gonna generate a public key for the SSH uh, sessions. And that key then gets put into DigitalOcean and a fingerprint gets added. Uh, and speaking of DigitalOceans, we will need to uh, publish things to it. So there's an API key. And because it is a live demo, I'm gonna put the actual public key, uh, the private key in there. Um, so then we're gonna install Terraform. So we're just gonna do a quick get, unzip it. and initialize. So this just prepares Terraform. And then Terraform apply will actually take the whole stack and deploy it on my own serve, uh, digital ocean droplets. So this takes anywhere from 10 to 40 minutes. Um, as of last night, we got it down to 10 minutes. We found what was happening, but uh, we're gonna let this run while we continue the presentation and check it out after. So. Let's talk a little bit about what we did at our network. So this is kind of the map of how um, the R network streaming was taken care of. We basically had two feeds, an HDMI feed from the presenter's laptop and from the cameras. Um, they would go into a laptop running OBS. Um, OBS would then publish the stream over a VPN connection over the internet to the RTMP server, which is one of the droplets that the stack creates. Uh, because we did not know if this would work, that RTMP server actually hosts the files for two different means of streaming, um, the IPFS stream and a pure clear um, legacy HTTP stream. So we, if one would fail, we still had the old, the other one. Um, so the IPFS side consists of an IPFS server that actually does the heavy lifting in creating the IPFS hashes and things of that nature, and then mirrors, uh, which would actually host the files um, and, and such. So let's talk a little bit about IPFS and video. So to put a video on IPFS is pretty straightforward. It's very similar to any other uh, type of content. You record the video, you hash it, and you put it on IPFS and then publish the hash to everybody. But what happens if you wanna hash something that hasn't happened yet? I mean, that, that's the question. So, we, were looking, we looked at something called HLS, which a lot of websites have been using for various reasons. Uh, so HLS was developed by Apple. It was released in 2009. It basically bre breaks the stream into small pieces, little small chunks. And the uh, sequence of the chunks actually make up the stream. Um, what HLS does is creates a playlist that actually describes what the sequence is. So as an example, there's an M3U8 uh, list of the different chunks that the client downloads. Then uh, the client starts downloading each chunk individually um, and playing it as it goes. So the question we came up is, what if we just hash each individual chunk? And that, that's what we did. So um, the video source was from an RTMP server. We used FFmpeg to actually create the HLS chunks. Um, the, the small pieces of video. Um, and then we just wait until the chunk is created. Once the chunk is created, uh, we add it to the IPFS uh, cloud and we store that new hash somewhere so we can rewrite the M3U8 list and then just rinse and repeat. So we created a log file that looks kind of like this. Uh, basically it just has the hash, the file name, uh, timestamp, and the length of the hash. And uh, when we rewrite the HLS file, it kind of looks like that, where we basically point it to an IPFS gateway uh, with the correct chunk and the information. So now that we have this, um, the sequence, we need to publish the playlist. And the playlist is, um, it changes, it changes about every 20 seconds depending how many, uh, how big of chunks you create. So, um, the web video player can, they, can play it through a gateway. So that way uh, the, the video player doesn't really need to get modified or anything, it's just HTTP. 
and you know, mission accomplished, right? We, we published it into IPNS because it's a mutable format. Um, the video player plays it. What could go wrong? Well, they say there are only two hard things in computer science. Cache invalidation, naming things, asynchronous callbacks, and off by one errors. We hit them all. Cache invalidation. Um, trying to figure out why the stream was stalling. Well, IPNS takes two minutes to publish the stream. That's four times slower, assuming you have a 30 second chunk. That's not gonna work. Uh, IPNS then takes about two minutes to resolve, which again, it's not gonna work. So IPNS with DHT takes way too long because what we were told there's way too many people behind the NAT and it's basically uh, luck of the draw if you're gonna get a fast resolve or not. So we looked at IPNS PubSub, which uh, publishes things very, very quickly and it works great most of the time. So what was our solution? Well, because we wanted this to work, because we wanted this to be a proof of concept, we scrapped the IPNS for the conference and just hosted the small little six, 700 byte file on HTTP. It wasn't gonna break things. Well, naming things. Uh, well, if FFmpeg was restarted, it starts enumerating from the beginning and duplicating names in the log file. So when you were trying to replace them, the hashes don't match up and everything just breaks. So our solution was instead of replacing files in the M3U8 file, we just created our own. We had all the information we needed. Asynchronous callbacks. Um, we depend on a series of events to make this happen. Um, the first thing is FFmpeg, IPFS, and a process script. So each one of these is run in its own thread. What could possibly go wrong? So our solution was creating self-recovery measures that realize that something's not working properly every time uh, it loops just to think, get things up and running. So uh, off by one errors. Um, HLS sequence have a time code in them. Uh, if they're incorrectly ordered, the client stalls. Rewriting them with a time code led to very limited success, but when we, we looked at this problem, we found that HLS had a better solution. There's actually a tag in HLS that indicates the beginning of a new sequence and we applied that and things started working. So, you know what? Now that we have, uh, we went through all this, let's see what happens with our build. And uh, unfortunately our build is still building, but uh, you know what? We're gonna do a bit of a Martha Stewart on here and um, look at a already spun up cluster. So, uh, Elon. config files that you put on your computer. Uh, you connect the VPN and we use that as an authentication mechanism. The nice thing about OpenVPN also is that it wraps it in a TCP link uh, so the UDP packets don't drop. Um, usually live streams are use U, uh, UDP packets because you don't want to, if you lost some packets, who cares, you want to continue. But because there's a bit of a delay, wrapping it in a TCP actually creates a better stream without um, so much delay. So I'm gonna stop sharing now, and Elon, if you wanna share your screen, let's, uh, let's stream something. All right, so we're gonna use OBS, as I mentioned, to stream something to live.mesh.world. So we're gonna select the output uh, stream, we're gonna put in um, this is all in the readme. Um, we're going to put the IP address of our server over VPN, which is always 10, 10, 10, 1, slash live. And uh, set up our OBS as normal and start streaming to it. So we're going to just do a video file here. Um, so now what's happening is OBS is actually sending the content of this uh, video stream to uh, the server, all right, and um, in a few seconds, we should be able to see, uh, we're still seeing the end of the last one. Takes a few, oh, no, we had a problem here. VPN needs to reconnect. Let's try.
try it again. So stop streaming, start it up again. Uh, there we go, 30 frames per second, zero drop frames. All right, looks like it's working now. So let's give it about 30 seconds for it to kick in on the back end. And uh, there's a link that was posted in uh, the chat, which you can uh, take a look at uh, the live stream. So you might get the tail end of a stream we tried out yesterday because we haven't really gotten very far um, in recording this one, but uh, in a few moments. So there is a little bit of a delay on uh, on this model because um, as I said, you can't hash live events. So between the waiting for the chunk to get created, it getting published on IPFS, um, followed by um, actually the HLS client downloading the proper chunks and and so forth, there is a little bit of a delay on this. Uh, but um, when we streamed it at the conference, uh, we had about 16 people view it and the stream worked great. It didn't go down once, I think for about half a second um, and we had some really good so uh, what time is it Do we have time for another quick demo um yes okay a very quick demo <laughs> okay so I'll show you this really really quickly this is a what we did is we took the stack and we compressed it onto a Raspberry Pi using the Raspberry Pi um, uh, camera so I'm gonna share my screen here for a second and uh, grab some links here. Where did my links go? So uh, I'm gonna go directly to local IP addresses just because it works better. Um, so this is a Raspberry Pi camera pointed out um, onto outside uh, a window. Um, and as you can see, it streams pretty well on local IP addresses. And if we wanted to there's no ports forwards. There's nothing like that. Um, this is playing off of a third, uh, a third party uh, VMware uh, with uh, with the same player. Um, as you can see, it it plays. And then another little thing we did because so this is the Raspberry Pi camera hooked up to the Raspberry Pi. And uh, so we were talking, what else could we do with this? What what could be some cool things? So what we did is. Let's see if this thing loads. Um, we took a Raspberry Pi, we connected it to a uh, software-defined radio, tuned it into an FM frequency, and uh, we, now we have internet radio over IPFS. So I will throw these into the chat. I can figure out how. Uh, where are my chats? And uh, for you guys to take a look at. And this is just running. You'll see that the streams will stall and things of that nature. Unfortunately, that's kind of the issues we ran into running in, with IPFS. Uh, there's some things that need to get cleaned up and fixed and sped up, but uh, proof of concept worked. So, uh, okay, so let me stop that. Let me put those links in the chat for you all. And. Oops. Is now a good time for a silent round of applause? Please. This is great. Thank you so much. <laughs> Woo! This is yeah, so exciting. So, yeah. And you know, oh, it worked. It, it worked really great. Um, all the problems that we actually had were actually uh, physical um, issues at the location we were at because we were at the Mozilla Hive and we had to use a bit of hackery to actually get it into our laptops. Um, so we had some audio sync issues, stuff like that, but none of it was because of the stack. It was because of um, just very short uh, amount of time we had to prep it in. But yeah. Thank you so much for the presentation and the demo. Um, now we have time for questions. 
we will go over an extra five minutes to accommodate uh, questions. So if you have a question, could you just please put it in the chat? Excellent. So, questions? Um, Johnny? Johnny Crunch, question? Yeah, I suppose just, um, is there a threshold as far as the number of people can, who can hit it? I guess since you're using the gateway, uh, that shouldn't be a problem. So, like, it, did you do any load testing? Um, well, we got 16 people on it. That's kind of the load that we were able to put on it. Um, could we have done more? Probably. Uh, we did limit the amount of things that could go wrong um, by basically running this off of all of our servers. So our gateway, our uh, RTMP server, our IPFS server, et cetera, et cetera. Um, however, uh, we've done some playing around, especially with IPFS, using the um, the module of the uh, add-in for Chrome and Firefox. Um, and in theory, what we should be able to do is actually spread that content around um, a lot faster if everybody was using the module. So, I mean, in theory, if everything works as planned, um, I mean, scalability shouldn't be an issue at all if things work. Um, is that Ben? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so in the, in the current repository for the Terraform script, there's a variable that controls how many mirrors you, we can spin up. So if we are expecting like a thousand people to watch it, we can, uh, from the beginning, spin, spin up like four droplets for, uh, for mirrors, and each mirror also holds its own gateway. Um, but then the more mirrors we have, the more uh, IPFS nodes there are, and then uh, it would do the distribution of the chunks uh, through, through IPFS. Uh, David? This is really awesome. Congrats on all the work. And, and yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. Uh, to try this out. Uh, I, have, I have one question. Uh, if you export, um, given like that you, I, I don't know HLS in depth and, and probably it's not possible, but like given that you are already chunking in some other place that is not directly uh, where the capture is being done, would it be possible to kind of like do the transcoding? So kind of like encode it to multiple resolutions, right? Like so imagine like you're streaming at 4K and like you can like, do the 1080p and the 720 and, and so on, and kind of like have the same IPNS pointer point to the root of all of those chains, like all of those chains of blocks on the multiple uh, resolutions, and then let the device pick up on the right resolution, like let the, the client decide, oh, I want to follow this specific one because my device is a phone and I, I don't need more, something like that. Yeah, so HLS, has, that's one of the powers of HLS is that you can do multiple resolutions and then it decides that, you know what, I'm lagging behind. Let me drop to a lower resolution um, so that there's, because it assumes there's network congestion. Um, so yes, you can do that. It's just part of HLS. But one of the issues that you would probably run into now, we didn't do this, but just looking at it is first of all, you would be distributing multiple different streams. So if you are looking at uh, pushing out the stream to multiple, uh, to a large audience, you would have to push out actually multiple different streams. So there'll be, it, you would actually be uh, splitting off uh, how many nodes have the stream that you're actually watching. But the other issue that you would also run into is that the lag in HLS would not necessarily be a a bandwidth issue anymore because there's so many other factors. There's has IPNS updated properly? Has um, does the IPFS have the hash that you're looking for, et cetera, et cetera? So um, although that could definitely be something to look at, it would have to be there would have to be work done on the HLS side to deal with those different variables. Yeah, absolutely. And and perhaps like one potential use case would be that like even the receivers are the one doing doing the transcoding so if i have i don't know a laptop in my home and i'm watching some streaming and i have other devices in my home that are also like trying to watch the same stream i can be the machine that is responsible for like doing the the re-encoding and then because like it's all deterministic in the end so like the devices can just like fetch these re-encoded blocks from my machine directly but like using the same pointer that like you are providing. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, 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 it's an idea. Um, I mean, there's yeah. a lot of them. Uh, we tried. Uh, there was an issue with the video um, feed on DWeb, and we tried to pull the stream from YouTube and push it into IPFS. Unfortunately, the issue they had was actually before it hit YouTube. So, although the theory worked and it was working, it, it didn't really solve any problems. Uh, so, um, it, you can def there's definitely ways of you know pulling the stream and re-encoding it and things of that nature. Interesting. Awesome. Okay, we're going to end here. Thank you so much, uh, Yurko, Ben, and Elon for presenting and uh, sharing with us. And okay. before you go, uh, I will leave a link to our weekly newsletter in the comments. And I would like to thank Lito for taking notes. Have a great day, and I will see you next week. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye.